Yes, guys, it's time for season three of my team career mode on F1 2020. In this episode here today, guys, we are going to be doing the off season stuff. So pretty much race one in Australia will be in the next episode. In this one here today, we're going to be doing the upgrade, spending a lot of money in today's videos and also showing you guys the brand new car livery and just the whole new outlook of the team. If you guys are excited for it, guys, then drop me a like and also subscribe if you're new, guys, especially if you enjoy what you see in today's video. I've got some big surprises lined up, so I do recommend you stay and watch the entire video, guys. I think you're going to really, really like it, including the car reveal with the brand new livery and brand new title sponsor. So without further ado, let's jump into it and let's see how this episode goes. Here we go then guys, it's time for some big changes. As you can see on the left hand side of the screen, we've got a contract renewal, we've got a press interview, some um, resources coming in and also the end of season. So first of all, let's go over to the activities tab. So let's assign a few things. We've got a three day period here. So we're going to work on some teamwork. I thought that's going to be the best way to go. So first of all, it's going to be aerodynamics equipment upgrade and try and improve that before the um, we spend the R&D points over the winter. We then got a sponsor advertisement. I'm going to do that for um, for the team. I think that's going to work quite well for us, to be honest. And then we've got two more days left over, which we can work on the durability as well. So all these activities are with the team in mind. We then move over to the messages tab and the call does confirm Kimi Raikkonen has retired. So there's going to be a lot of driver changes this season and I'm looking forward to it. So everything's looking good. Everything is set up, but we're now going to start working on some upgrades straight away and uh, waste no time because some upgrades might take a while to arrive. So as you can see, we are in third place on the R&D graph. There's nothing in progress at the moment. And if we look at the three separate trees, on the engine, we are mid-table, so we definitely need to improve on that front. Chassis, we are in second place behind Mercedes, and in the aerodynamics, we are in fourth place. So a bit of work needs to be done on the aero and the engine, but also the durability. We are at the bottom of the table. I feel like I want to try and work on this a little bit and um, be able to do a whole season on one set of engines, pretty much. So um, to do that, we are going to have to make some big upgrades. Now, the ultimate um, electrical systems one is very tempting because... The less worn your control electronics are, the less worn everything else will get, basically. So it's a, it's a pretty decent thing to upgrade moving forward. So with that in mind, I am going to go for this ultimate um, upgrade for the durability for the electrical system slash the control electronics. There's no difference between rushing it or making it standard. So we're just going to buy, buy it standard. Hopefully it doesn't fail. But we're going to add some more to that. So we're going to go to the engine. And I don't normally do this because ultimately it doesn't really improve performance that much, but we are going to go for a fuel efficiency upgrade and um, hopefully that makes our car a little bit better in terms of um, being able to run a bit less fuel to start the race. But like I said, it doesn't necessarily affect overall car performance. We then move over to the aerodynamics and again, we've got a few options here. These upgrades here are for the DRS. I kind of find them a bit pointless. Again, it's a bit of a, a tricky one because... You only use DRS when you're overtaking in the race or in qualifying, so I don't really see much to it. Um, so I'm not sure if I want to go for this and really waste my money on it. So I might purchase it later on if we have to really push on with the upgrades. But for now, looking at these upgrades here, it looks like we are going to go for the Halo one and to improve the rear downfalls. So we're going to get this on the car. So let's buy that. We're going to again develop it standard and... Um, there we go. So we've got three big upgrades on the way, and that should hopefully take us above Red Bull. But now we're going to move over to um, the calendar and move ahead because we've got some business to take care of. And I want to hold on to my $21 million because it looks like we might be getting a new teammate. Well then, guys, the time has arrived, and I've been with Mick Schumacher now for two years. I am the boss. I've given him time to try and impress me. Two full seasons, you know, with an improving car, especially this year. And it just hasn't happened. You know, he's not got a podium yet and he's been close a few times. And to be fair, there's a couple of times where he threw it away. So it is a shame because Mick's pace is 92, which is incredible. His rating is 77. But unfortunately, like I said, it hasn't happened for him. So it's time to delve into the driver market. And I know exactly who I'm going to sign. Now in the driver market, there are lots of options, but there's only one that I'm really keen on. And it's this man right here, Mr. Daniel Ricciardo, 91 rated. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to try and negotiate with him and try and sign him on. So let's see if we can make a deal and uh, try and approach Ricardo and make something happen. So here we go then. Let's see if he wants to do business with us. Let's have a look. So he wants... Um, okay, he's accepted the approach, which is good. So let's negotiate. That's a good start. It looks like Ricardo is happy to drive for us. So let's negotiate with Daniel here. So let's begin the auction. So looking at it, we're going to go for... Uh, a small bid, Renault, 
10.12. That's okay. We'll go for a large one. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll step it up here. We'll, we'll go straight in. I don't mind, you know, putting a bit of money underneath. Um, we'll go for another large one. I don't mind paying for a card. I don't want overpaying. I feel like, you know, I want this. So I want to try and secure this. Um, we'll go for one more large one. Then we'll start going for the small ones. Let's see if Renault respond to that. Come on, Renault. Come on, Renault. Don't, don't, don't. There we go. Job done. Simple as that. 11... Um, 0.25 million and that is Ricardo in the black and blue of 97 racing and as you can see with the signing of Ricardo he is now 99 rated which is incredible so we're going to have a top teammate this year and the competition is going to be very fierce indeed but there you can see the contract has been signed a 16.25 million contract cost 11.25 million salary and a 5 million buyout and he's going to be signed on until 6th of July. Now, with that done, we're going to skip ahead on the calendar once again. Our cash is pretty low, 4.74 million. But of course, we'll get a nice bonus over the winter during the off season. So that's why I saved up $20 million. We're now going to move ahead to the press interview. We've not seen much in the way of development for your second driver. Do you feel that you don't need to? Or do you feel that they've already reached their potential? To be fair, it's very simple. I feel like, you know, we expect a commitment from both parties. So, you know, if Daniel commits to us, we're going to commit to him. And it's going to be a good relationship if that's the case. So, yeah, that's the way we see it. Daniel Ricciardo is known to look at the potential of teams and play the long game. Does he perhaps see himself getting a championship at your team? Yep, I think that could be the case, you know. We're looking to win the championship this year. I think that's the aim we're setting out for ourselves. And... It's as simple as that. We're here to win championships and, you know, it's the same for both of us. Would it be safe to say that in terms of team orders, your career comes first in your team? No, that's not the case. Um, there's no team orders here. You know, we've said it since day one. We respect our drivers equally, whether it's myself or my teammate, whoever has the better chance of the championship, then, you know, it is what it is. We're going to keep it fair. Well, thanks so much as ever for your time. It's hugely appreciated. There it is then. That is it. Season two is officially done. And we're going to quickly go over the stats because I feel like you guys quite enjoy those. So as you can see on screen, we've got the Drivers Championship and the Constructors on screen. And um, I'm looking forward to it. This season with Daniel, I'm really keen to see how things shake out. I'm also keen to see the driver transfers because, of course, we've got Raikkonen retiring. And with Mick Schumacher out of our team, will it be a direct swap? Will Mick just go to Alpha? Or will there be some big changes everywhere else? We're about to find out. In terms of season results, in terms of ourselves, if we look at um, season two, pretty decent. You know, some good consistency there. We won two races. We got... Actually, no, we won three races, sorry, which was pretty decent. Uh, we got two second places, three second places, it looks like. And then two third places. So it was in the podium quite a few times, to be fair. So that's going to be one, two, three four five six seven eight nine nine podiums in a 22 race season that was pretty impressive to be honest so in the end i think it was a great year for us and if we look at the trophies you can see uh, actually four race wins sorry so canada italy singapore and mexico and then you've got the few silver ones from monaco azerbaijan and uh, brazil and then you've got the few bronze trophies the usa hungary and uh, also a few fourth places there as well you know fourth place in russia fourth place in japan fourth place in abu dhabi fourth place in spain so some very good consistency from us all season long but with that said guys that is it for the season we're now going to move into season number three and here we go then looking at the team acclaim we're going to gain quite a bit to be fair both myself and then Ricardo seemingly leveling up to level number 16, which is great. And also as a team as well, we're going to really push forward and that looks really, really decent for us. And we then move over to the cash because now we've got our end of season bonuses. And look at that, absolutely insane. We're going to gain $40 million and we've got some serious money to spend moving forward into the new season, which is great. And I'm looking forward to it. The new lineup is very exciting as we then look at the final season summary. And you can see third in the championship for us, sixth for Daniel. And with that, we're now going to jump into season three. Here it is then, guys. It's time for a brand new season here in my team. And as you can see on screen, the car is under wraps and we are about to unveil that bad boy. But first of all, we are going to look at the activities tab. So we've got quite a while until the car reveal. So let's assign some activities here and try to improve our car and our team as a whole. So looking at a few options here, I feel like a cash boost would be decent. So uh, we could get an extra million from pre-season merchandise sales. But to be fair, looking at the car, 
knowing the weaknesses of the car. This one here, the power and durability focus, seems like a nice little tasty option because it's going to help us improve in those departments. So we are going to throw that on there straight away. We then go past the car reveal and we've got five more days until the first race of the season. So before that, what we are going to do, I'm thinking, is a pre-season advertisement campaign to improve our team acclaim and try and reach level 20 to try and get an extra sponsor in the team. So we're going to assign that as well. And with that, we now move over to the facilities. Now, we have nearly $50 million to spend. So first of all, we're going to jump into the powertrain because what we're going to do this season is work on the resource point generation because if we get that, it will help us out a lot in terms of engine upgrades. So we're going to throw one of those on there straight away. We're then going to move over to the chassis tab and we're going to purchase the exact same one over here as well for the resource point generation to put that on level two and if we now back out you can see we've got um chassis and powertrain pending to be level two and we've still got a solid 36 million to spend so looking elsewhere i feel like durability is going to be a key area this season as well but we're not going to spend money there just yet i'm looking at marketing and activities management is Pretty tempting to be fair because it will increase our positive effects on team activities. So I am going to spend the 5 million on that to try and improve that as well. And I was tempted to spend 15 million on you know improving sponsor relations. But I feel like we can improve elsewhere first of all. And um, looking at the car again, different areas. I feel like we need to keep things balanced. So we are going to go on the durability and make a few upgrades. So first of all, we're going to go for the resource point generation upgrade. And to be fair, we're going to go for quality control as well. And we're going to go for build time because we can go for all of these. They're still relatively cheap. And it means now we've got all of our facilities pretty much on level two. Now, the question is, where do I really want to focus this season and, you know, spend some big points? All of our upgrades have arrived over the winter. So we're now back up to second place, as you can see on screen. And, um, We've got a few options to look at. So the engine is looking pretty decent. You know, we've only got three more upgrades left on the engine. We've got about seven upgrades left on the aero and about seven left on the chassis. So I feel like chassis and aero are going to be um, key areas this year. So if we jump into chassis, we're going to have to unlock the fabrication tier three to move forward. So um, it's either that one or aerodynamics. They're both going to be 10 million. Um, Considering the options we have, I feel like chassis is going to be the one we're going to go for. So we're going to buy that one and that is going to pretty much spend all of our budget and all of our improvements. So with that said, guys, we've now assigned activities. We've spent all of our money. We're now going to skip ahead to the car reveal. There it is then, guys. We are ready to go. But before we do the car reveal, we've now got some more R&D points. So we're going to spend those straight away and again, waste no time in terms of improving the car. So let's have a look. Moving forward into the start of the season, aerodynamics, we're in second place. Mercedes do have a big advantage over us. Chassis, we're in second place. Mercedes, again, have a pretty good advantage. Engine, we're fourth, so we do need to improve there. So I feel like we're going to dash on, I think, an ERS upgrade. I think that's going to be the way to go um, to improve our ERS efficiency. So we're going to get that on. And uh, to be fair, it won't be on, on the current time for the Australian Grand Prix. I'm going to rush it and see if we get it in time for Bahrain. I'm going to take a risk and see if um, that pays off. So there we go. That's going to spend our R&D points. All of our money is gone, and we're now ready to reveal the 97003. <laughs> Ooh, boys there she is the 97003 has been revealed and she's an absolute beauty it's the return of martini and 97 racing has now become 97 martini racing wow i mean incredible we've got the full team package you can see in the background we've got the uh, full team wear sponsored by adidas as well as our official kit creator and we've kept on all of our sponsors from last season, all the in-game sponsors. So Shark, uh, Pay Night, DSB Optics, and um, also Sudo as well. But we've added Martini as a kind of fantasy new title sponsor to the game. And you can see all the team were looking updated. Ben seemingly pretty happy there, working on the engine to be fair. So good to see. And everything looking absolutely insane. You combine this with the signing of Daniel Ricciardo as our teammate. 
and things are looking pretty damn slick for us. So let's show you guys around and show you a few parts of the team. So um, one disclaimer, the helmets are not yet finished. I'm still working on those. So for now, they're still the same helmets as last season. But that aside, let's jump into it. So first of all, guys, I want to give a massive shout out to Chris Dix. I'll leave a link down below, guys, in the description. He helped me out with all of this you know i made the car skin he made all the team wear and it looks insane so the race suits the pit crew suits which you'll see in, in episode one all the race crew suits you know all that kind of stuff the gloves chris dix absolutely smashed it guys so i'll leave a link to his channel down below in the description but without further ado let's look at a few things so first of all the race suits i mean look at these bad boys absolutely insane daniel ricardo looking absolutely fresh with that new suit as you can see the hats as well with the logo the martini on there the iconic adidas three stripe on the shoulders and we've got our team logo the veloce one as well and all the real life sponsors or should i say in-game sponsors on the right sleeve and a really really nice design in my opinion um, let's look into it at more detail so if we go over to the characters tab and you can see here look at this absolutely insane the helmet of course same as before you guys will see the new helmet in race one in australia but first of all the race suit as you can see i mean geez man i wish i could rotate it so you guys can see it better but it looks so so clean and uh, the martini never fails you know it's, it's 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 a timeless iconic sponsor and the colors work really well with the black and blue that we're running in our team so happy days the gloves as well custom adidas gloves i think they look absolutely mega again with the adidas three stripes on there as well and uh, yeah that is it guys pretty much that is the full look and i'm so excited to start the race in australia race number one it's going to be really really exciting myself Daniel Ricciardo, you can see in the top right, the brand new name, 97 Martini Racing, that has been confirmed. And of course, the new team badge with my own logo on it. So everything is fresh. Everything is up to date. And let's give you guys a bit of a close up here to the livery and so you can appreciate it a bit more. So we've gone for a matte paint job. So taking inspiration from Red Bull and Ferrari, the blue and the black are matte. The sponsors are actually gloss, so they will shine like normal. So we've got a few details. So we've got a very vague team logo on the nose and also on the halo. We've got all the sponsors on the front nose there as well in white. I think it looks pretty damn decent. I might change them to black. I'll see how the car looks on track and I'll make a decision with that. We've got the Racers 1, of course, logo on the side with the black wheels and uh, all the key sponsors are on the car including adidas on the rear wing we've got martini on the back there as well as you can see looking absolutely flawless and then from the back of the car again let's get a bit of a rear view shot here Oof, that's the money show right there absolutely insane and then let's go to some details so from the top you can see on each of the two wings we've got the iconic three adidas stripes we've then got some martini sponsors on the halo along with the veloce sponsor and we've got as you can see on the inside of the halo if you can make that out in the video we've got my twitter handle ricardo's twitter handle and the subscribe mention in the middle of the halo hopefully that might attract more subscribers and viewers to the channel so yeah overall i love it guys let me know what you think of the livery in the comments down below i think the livery has turned out perfect. I spent so many hours on this trying to perfect it and get it right. And I wanted to come up with something fresh with the Martini design and not do something Williams did um, and kind of copy that design. So I really want to know what you guys think of this in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, I think this car looks like a championship winning car. And I'm really, really excited to just hit the track, race one in Australia and just see how she looks on there. So yeah, guys. That is going to be it for the reveal. You've seen the car. You've seen my teammate. You've seen the race suit. You've seen the gloves. All that good stuff. It's all done. We're ready to go. You can see Ricardo, 99 rated. Again, as we mentioned before, he's got a level one perks on everything. And it's going to be really competitive. We're level 19. So once we get level 20, we can unlock a ne an extra sponsor. So hopefully we can put that on the car as well. And it will just help, you know, fill the car out and give it more sponsors and look a lot more realistic. But there it is. Now we're going to skip ahead, guys, to the Australian Grand Prix. Uh, but first of all, let's quickly uh, confirm the upgrade, which seems to have not actually gone onto the car properly. So uh, we're going to reconfirm the upgrade and get that on. So we're going to rush it. There it is. And uh, we're now going to skip ahead on the calendar and get ready for race one in Australia. There we go then, guys. We are ready. Round one is just around the corner. And we are going for the World Championship. We start the season 
in second place in terms of being the strongest team on the grid just behind Mercedes and the aim of course is to beat the Silver Arrows so guys if you're excited for season three drop me a like and also subscribe if you are new guys to the channel for daily F1 content and also subscribe with notifications turned on guys for when round one of season three does eventually go live so you guys don't miss it in your sub box but guys check out the two videos on your screen right now and with that that's it Hopefully, you guys, look forward to it. Round one, I'm excited. But take care, guys. It's goodbye from me.